us And if our God is with us Then what could stand against And if our God is for us Then who could ever stop us And if our God is with us Then what could stand against What could stand against Our God is greater Our God is stronger today and we got something special and different going on for you today because we've got a youth group and uh, it, preachers even surprised today when the youth group showed up I didn't realize how much talent that we have in our youth department and our youth department is growing and we're so grateful for everything that is happening today not only in the youth department but uh, also in the church and the Iwana department and I mean that, all of it the, Use Awana and the preschool, and it's just, Lord is just blessing, Corey. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. We're going to put out some more chairs in the back, make another row on either side, uh, in case there's some more folks that will be coming in here in a few minutes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. We know that your blessings come more numerous than we can take note of, Lord. Uh, you make the sun to rise and to shine on the just and the unjust. But Lord, we know that the choices and riches of your blessings is the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came from heaven to earth because he loved sinners to die in our place on the cross of Calvary so that we, through his death, could have life. And Lord, we know the power of his resurrection guarantees that we have a heavenly home. And Lord, I just pray today, if there's anybody here that's not saved and not prepared and not ready, I pray, Lord, that today will be the day when they'll give their heart to Jesus, believe in him and trust in him, and receive the greatest gift of all time, your gift of forgiveness and salvation. Lord, just bless every home and every family that's represented. Watch over our nation, Lord, our president, our national leaders, and our military. We pray to keep this nation safe, Lord. Uh, we know that blessed is the nation whose Lord is their God. And Father, I pray that we will do what you encourage us to do in your word. You've taught us in your word that if my people should call my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn their wicked ways. Then will I hear, will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Lord, we need healing in America. And I pray, God, that that will come. May it start in our hearts and start in our lives today, Lord. Just take us and use us. We pray that we'll all receive a great spiritual blessing today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated for just a moment. Let me make a few announcements. Um, number one, a, uh, an announcement about the Valentine banquet on Wednesday night. Uh, the 12th of this month is coming Wednesday night. Everybody's invited, not just for couples, it's for everyone. And it is at 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Uh, the youth are going to be working with the, uh, with the Iwanas on Wednesday evening, so everybody's going to be busy. And the youth will be here at 6, and the Iwanas will be here at 6, and the rest of us will come Wednesday evening for our Valentine banquet. Our Corrie Kid Spotlight is on Aniston Bailey today. A beautiful smile and a wonderful picture and insert in our bulletin. And she's three and a half years old and we love our kids and our kids love the Lord and they, they just brighten everything. It's worth your trip on Wednesday evening just to see the kids. I mean, it, it really is and the young people. 
All right, let's see. Today uh, we got, uh, we got uh, choir practice at 5 and Sunday evening worship tonight at 6, children's worship at 6 on Wednesday evening. As I just mentioned, we got the Iwanas and the, and the uh, youth and also the Valentine Banquet this coming Wednesday evening. And I think all the rest of the announcements are in the bulletin and they're also on the screen behind me. So anyway, and with that, we will continue with our song service. My mama read a story from the Bible long ago About Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego How the wicked king commanded them be thrown into the flame Because they would not bow and then deny their father's name My mama said the king stood on a balcony so tall When he looked in, he was shocked by all the things he saw Cause he thought that he would find them lying dead up on the ground Instead of three, he counted four up walking all around And I said, Mama, wait a minute There's one thing that I must know If three went in and three came out then where that fourth man go? And I never will forget it, Mama, dance across the floor these are the words I heard her say while shouting through the door She said he's still in the fire and he's walking in the flame And he'll be there to help you when you call upon his name And he can still deliver by his almighty fire While here below it's good to know he's still in the fire Now my friend you may be destined Face, I saw this flame, but I'm glad that I can tell you through the power of his name. Not one flame of fire will touch you. You'll come through it and you'll tell yesterday, today, forever. God is still alive and well. I said he's still in the fire and he's walking in the flame. And he'll be there to help you when you call upon his name. And he can still deliver by his almighty power. While here below, it's good to know he's still in the fire. church now we need to go somewhere else now I promise you now Woo! man I tell you boy are we not blessed with young people that just love the Lord but here but that should be a challenge for some of us to have that little gray in there you know we've got choir practice at five o'clock tonight come and join us we got opportunities to serve and to do different things gosh my how wonderful is that I want to invite you to stand we're gonna sing number 310 310 my God is real Something I may not know. There are some things I can go, but I am sure there is one thing that God is real for. I can feel it moving. My God is real, He's real in my soul.
glad we have a God that's real. Amen. That's still in the saving business, still in the healing business, and, and I mean, He was still active. You know, that's one of the best things that we get to experience and understand is that our God is still at work. He's still saving. I mean, over the past few weeks, we've seen Him just impact lives. Why not today for you to come and understand the God that we serve, the God that just loves you for where you are, to understand that He is real. He wants to be part of your life. We're going to sing number 314. I bowed on my knees and cried holy, and maybe today's the day you need to drop to those knees and just cry out to the Holy One. Lead us in our offertory of prayer, please, sir. Going to sing, uh, oh, praise the name. Psalm 148 says, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise the Lord from the heavens. 
Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Praise them. Praise the name of the Lord. For He commanded and they were created, and He established them forever and ever. He gave a decree and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised his horn for his people, praise for all his saints. For the people of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. Amen. That's it this morning. Verse 13, it says just to praise the name. Let's just continue doing that as we praise the name of our Savior, Jesus. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. bound drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah stand all alone so pray
there are times in our lives when we need the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. There's never a moment, Lord, that we don't need your abiding presence in our life. But Lord, there are times when there's just a special occasion. And God, we've had those kind of experiences in recent days. We've been made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we're grateful that we can experience a little bit of heaven before we get there. And we know the activities of heaven are singing and shouting and praising the name of the Lord. And Father, today we pray if there's anybody present that's not prepared for life, death, and eternity, may this be the hour, Lord, when the Holy Spirit drives conviction home to their heart that something in the message or something in a prayer or something in a song or something in a word of testimony they make them realize their real need of Jesus and the danger of putting off so great a salvation. We believe, Lord, that we're living in the last days, the latter days, Lord. We see the signs of the times all around us. And so, Lord, we pray that not only we want to be ready for your return, but, Lord, I pray help us to encourage as many of our family members and friends to be ready. And, Lord, we know that you could come at any moment, at any time. So I pray, Father, that We'll all be ready whenever that hour is come and that nobody in our families or our friends will be left behind. We pray this in Christ's name. And amen. And you may be seated. Let Brother Scott get his computer here. Get your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm going to focus today on a very familiar character in the Bible. Uh, there's a reason for that. There are two signs of the nearness of the Lord's return. One is the sign of, of Lot. As the days of Lot were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And after what has happened in the Iowa caucus, and the kind of people in America that is coming to the forefront, I see the fulfillment of that sign as the days of Lot. The other sign is the days of Noah. As the days of Noah were, Jesus said in Matthew 24, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now I'm going to emphasize today that if we're getting close to the days of Noah and the coming of the Lord, the sign fulfillment of that biblical sign, we need to exercise the same kind of faith that Noah had. And he had great faith. So while you're finding your places in Matthew and Hebrews, rather, chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, I want to tell you about an experience I had this week. I was invited to Darden Baptist Church. They were having a revival meeting. I meant to do this in the announcement. I forgot it. Uh, so let me do it now. They are having a revival meeting all throughout the month, but on Thursday night, they're having a Thursday night revival meeting. Their prayer meeting starts at 6.30, and their preaching starts at 7 o'clock. And I was on the way down there and folks just kept passing me on Thursday evening. And I wondered, where in the world did they in such a hurry to get to? And when I got there, and it was a little before 6.30, they were, they were rushing up to the building to get out for the prayer meeting. And I had to look for a place to park my car. That is a good sign. I'm so thrilled that the churches in our area, so many of them are experiencing revival from the Lord. So if you want to go and enjoy it when this coming Thursday evening, let me encourage you to join our neighbor church in their revival meeting on Thursday evening. It's, we're getting ready for the Lord to return. Something exciting is in the air. Hebrews 11, beginning in verse 1. Now faith is, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. That is the best definition of faith that you can, that you can find. Faith is believing God. Faith is trusting God. Faith is putting God at His word. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtained a good report. 
Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than came by which he obtained righteousness, God testifying of his gifts and by it. He being dead, yet, yet he speaketh. The way of faith is demonstrated here by Abel. He, his faith was a worshiping faith. When he come down to Enoch, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now if Abel had a worshiping faith, a way of faith, a worshiping faith, you can say that Abel here has a, uh, or rather Enoch here has a walking faith. He walked with God and he was not for God took him. And it says in the sixth verse, but without faith it is impossible to please God, to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, here's my text, by faith Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Now you got Noah's flood. Noah was a witnessing faith, a working faith, a witnessing faith. And after the flood then it lists Abraham. By faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance obeyed and went out knowing, not knowing whether God was. I want to tell you dear friends, we today are living in days that are similar to the days of Noah and the days of Lot. And if that be the case, we do real well to demonstrate the same kind of faith that Noah has and is described as having here in Genesis 11 and verse 7. Now if you trace back your ancestral tree, you're going to find that all of us are a little bit kin. Did you know that? We're all kin. So I guess the thing we need to do this morning to kind of break the ice, and really I guess we've had the ice broken this morning with a handshake and with youth leading out in our service this morning, but let's get a little more personal. Let's look over to the person next to us and say, Hello, cousin. I mean, seriously, hello, cousin. Because the truth of the matter is, we all descended from Noah, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. You say, well, we're different flavors and we're different types and we're different this. And that's true. There's a lot of truth in that. But we're all descendants of Noah. Every single person here can trace their ancestral tree back to Noah. And beyond Noah, you can trace your ancestral tree to Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden. They were the mother and the father of us all. Now when you get that far back, you realize that Adam was made in the image of God, but he's saying we're made in the image of Adam and we're imperfect. We have a sinful nature. I learned that from Sister Faustine. Until then I said everybody is made in the image of God. Adam was made in the image of God, but when he sinned, sin came upon the human race and we're made in the, in the image of Adam. We take on Adam's image and Adam took on God's image. I hope that's not too deep for you. But when the human race got to the point that only their minds and their deeds and their actions were evil continually, it repented God that God had even made man and so he found one man can you imagine this? How many folks are on the face of the earth prior to the flood? I estimate millions, but I don't know how many millions. I have no idea. You say, why don't you have an idea? Because everybody died of that generation except Noah, his wife, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. Eight souls are in the ark. But if you don't believe that there was a flood that covered the entire world, you come to my back porch, step up on my carport, and there's a rock laying there that's got all kinds of fossils in it. It's a fossilized rock. I had a biology teacher that could tell you whatever thing on it was. I mean, he had a scientific name 
for every little animal that's encrusted in that rock. And I live in Decaturville, Tennessee, and the last time I checked a Tennessee map, that was nowhere close to an ocean, but it's got all these ocean animals and all these shells and fossils, and how in the world did that get in Decatur, Tennessee? I can explain that. I don't have to be a scientific genius to explain that. It got there because there was a flood and it was God's judgment upon the human race. Remember what I said a while ago? There are two markers of the nearness of the end time. As the days of Lord were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And what do we got in our society today but another time like the time that Lot lived in. And people are rising to places of prominence not only in the United States and above America, but they're rising to prominence around the world and they got a different view of everything than you and I who read and believe the Bible, brother. They want to re-change. They want to change the definition of marriage. Marriage is between one man and one woman and the idea of marriage is for one lifetime until death do us part. That's God's ideal. That's how God established it. And let me tell you something. What God does, God does perfectly and you cannot improve upon it. So it's a sign of our time. Also, the sign, the other sign of the time, two markers of the end of the end of time. Matthew 24, 36, Jesus said, As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. If the events of Noah's day are to be repeated, we do well to repeat the faith of Noah's day. And notice what the Bible says about that faith. In verse 7, by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Now what do you see in that text? When you dissect it, when you take the verse apart, when you think about it, what do you see in the text? Noah had a working faith. By faith, Noah prepared an ark. Have you ever tried to build a boat? You ever tried to build a boat? I'm telling you, that's quite a project. That takes some skill. It either takes a natural ability that I certainly do not have. I remember my daddy built a wooden boat one time, and when we got that thing built, it was built out of cypress boards. And when we got that thing built, we carried it to the Tennessee River and filled it with a rock and sunk it in the Tennessee River. Of course, we put a rope on it so we could pull it out. Now we had caulked every seam in the boat. I don't remember now. I think it was cotton. I don't know what it was. It might have been some kind of a wick material. Back in those days you could still buy wicks for your cold old lamp. That's how old I am. My daddy had an ark of had a, an art of building wooden boat. He could build a wooden boat. And we sunk it on purpose so that the wood would swell up so that it did not leak. And the problem was, somebody stole their boat. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> All that trouble. I went to see Billy Barnacle in the nursing home the other day. Now, he's got problems. I mean, it's, you know, he's gotten old and senile and he don't remember very much. But I walked in the door at the nursing home into his room. He looked up at me and said, who stole our boat? <laughs> I said, I don't know, Billy, but if I find the guy that stole our boat, I'll bring him to you. You know what I mean? He'd forgotten everything else, but he remembered the fact that our fishing boat had gotten stolen. Noah built a boat. He built an ark. By faith, he prepared an ark. Now, remember, Abel had a worshiping faith. Enoch had a walking faith. Noah had a working faith. I'm going to ask you today if you're saved, how is your faith? Is it a working faith? Is it a working faith? You know what James said? James says, faith without works is dead in the Lord. You go to heaven by grace through faith, plus nothing, minus nothing, but you prove to your neighbors and your friends and your family and your community and your world that your salvation is real as you serve Jesus. I would not give you a nickel for somebody's salvation that has no works about it, okay? 
You're saved by grace through faith, plus nothing, minus nothing, but you prove that you are saved, your obedience in baptism, your faithfulness in church, your support of the ministry and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ proves it's real. Now how did Noah prove it was real? For 120 years, the Spirit of God moved and directed Noah. And I've often said, and I think I'm right on that, for 120 years, Noah preached one of the longest sermons in recorded history. He preached it with hammer and with pegs. I started to say hammer and nails. He probably didn't have no nails. He probably had wooden pegs. But he sawed planks. And he pegged them together and he pitched it with tar and he put a window at the top and a door in the side just exactly like God said for him to do. And for 120 years, I believe that Noah worked. I used to say, and you never get too old to learn things, right? I used to say, why this man, he preached 120 years and didn't have a convert. But you know what I found out? Not only did he have a work in faith, but he had a witness in faith. And I can prove that he had a witness in faith. You know why? Because his family was reached. He prepared an ark. Look at that verse again. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He convinced him that God had spoken to him, that God was directing his labor of love. And in all fairness, I believe that Noah had seven converts. Mrs. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah, and three daughter-in-laws. Why didn't the rest of the world of that day believe Noah? Why didn't they believe Noah? Why didn't they see his faith in action? Why didn't they understand that there was coming an impending judgment day by water? Why didn't they accept that fact and get ready and get on the ark? I'll tell you why. Because they just didn't believe. They just didn't believe. They just didn't believe. So Noah had a working faith. Noah had a witnessing faith. Let me tell you something else about Noah's faith. It was by divine revelation that Noah received the instruction to build the ark. Look at that verse again. By faith Noah being warned of God. Has God got your attention lately? Has there been some time in your life lately when God has got your attention? I remember several years ago over in across the river in Perry County. Brother Charles Livingood, pastor of First Baptist Church and I, we were in revival. I was there as he visiting a man. We went to visit this gentleman. You've heard me tell us before. Went to visit this gentleman and he was a businessman and when we pulled up, he didn't have any time for us. And we said, okay, we're going to pray for you. We'd like for you to come to revival. Maybe your wife faithfully comes. She doesn't miss anything. They tell me you hardly ever come and I'm going to pray for you. He said, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. The next day we were visiting Perry County Hospital. Walked down the hall and a voice came out of one of the rooms. I recognized the voice. It said, preachers, would you come in here and tell me what it was you wanted to tell me yesterday when I was so busy? I said, yeah, we came to tell you about the love of God, how that Jesus loves sinners. He said, I've got time to listen. I said, I thought you would since you are in the hospital. And we talked to him about Jesus. He gave his heart to the Lord. Got wonderfully and gloriously saved and followed the Lord in baptism next Sunday. And as far as I knew, and as long as he lived, he was faithful and served. Listen, if you're too busy to serve God, you're just too busy, period. It's absolutely too busy here. Being warned of God, no believed it. God said it, no believed it. That settled it. You say, well, preacher, you're, you're way old, too old fashioned here for things like this. Oh, yeah, I understand. There's probably some folks in Noah's day that, that when Noah said, you know, God told me to build a boat, they said, boat? What's a boat? We ain't never had a rain. There was a mist that came up from the earth and watered the earth. 
And Noah had to explain what a boat was. He had to explain what God had told him to do. And if it had been in our day, he'd had to go on and got a permit. He'd had to have it you know, certified by the zoning commission. And then somebody, if you know, somebody had said, well, we need the Long Range Planning Commission. If, if it was a Baptist, I know they'd have went and got the Long Range Planning Commission. And somebody would have said, well, we, we've looked at the schedule and, and we don't know about this, about this flood business, but we don't see it on the calendar. So the North said it's going to come. And you better get ready. Because God's told me to build a boat. And I believe God. Uh, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Do you think the Lord's been trying to tell us something lately? You know, we see the signs of the Lord's return. The imminence of that return in the nation of Israel, they regathered in their homeland after almost 1900 years, 1940. 1948, driven out of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. One of the greatest nations on the face of the hand of God is upon that nation. Don't you think God's trying to tell us something? The armies of the Gog and Magog War of Ezekiel 38 and 39. In that God said I'm going to put a hook in the jaw of the Gog of the North and bring him down and we believe that Gog of the North is Russia. And they're parked right at the borders of Israel today. I mean, where's the hot spot in the world? All around the little nation of Israel, friends. There are all kinds of signs being fulfilled before our very eyes. There's a coming day of wrath and a coming day of Judgment upon the ungodly. Noah, the lead God. It was by divine revelation. We have the divine revelation. I got the book in my hand. We got the divine revelation. Noah's faith was exercised amid prevailing unbelief. God told Noah, Genesis 7, come down all thy house into the ark. And so Noah, his wife, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah, their wives all came and got in the ark. The doors wide open. In Genesis 7, 4, it says, For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. It seven days, 120 years, and seven days of additional grace. Anybody want to go into the ark? All they had to do was believe that the gangplank would hold them up, and God would take care of them and get in the ark. God didn't say, go in, no way. He said, come on in. God was already in there. And seven days, seven days of extended grace. Are we in those seven days right now? Noah's faith was a given faith. God gave the dimensions for the ark. I tried to do a little bit of country calculation. If a cubic is 18 inches of our inches, I did a little bit of... Y'all may have a computer. You can just look it up right quick. But what I figured out with my mathematics was it was 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. I don't know how accurate I am because I done told you I'm not a boat builder. So I don't know exactly how accurate I am on that, but it was a big boat. If you can think about taking a football field and making it float with three stories and animals two by two come marching in the ark, enough for the voyage on the greatest flood that ever came on the face of the earth. Well... God gave him the dimensions, but he never said anything about buying the material, did he? So who furnished the material? You ever tried to figure that out on Noah's ark? Who furnished the material? I'll tell you who did. Oh, Noah did. Noah and his family did. You know what? If they didn't put it in the ark, they lost it in the world. Am I right about that? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. The only thing that really matters is what we do for Jesus, Right? Because you see, there's coming a day when everything else is going to be left behind. Noah's faith was motivated by fear. He prepared, he, Noah moved with fear, prepared an ark. Motivated by fear. There's no fear of God before men's eyes, and it's a tragedy of our day. And then, as I mentioned a while ago, 
It influenced his home. Now I want to do one more verse of scripture. I'm not going to hold you long because I'm, I'm about ready to give an invitation because there may be somebody here that needs to move. But there is a parallel between what happened back then, our day, and what's fixing to happen in the future. I said fixing to happen in the future. I don't know when it's coming. I'm not on the program committee. I just know I'm on the welcoming committee and I'm ready whenever it comes. But there's coming a day of judgment. Never be water again. God put a rainbow in the clouds as a promise that he had never destroyed the human race by a flood of water. But next time it comes, it's going to come by fire. Book of 2 Peter, chapter 3. I'm going to start reading with the first verse and read some verses from this chapter because it parallels our day. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. And you may be mindful of the words which are spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandments of us, the apostles of our Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the creation. From the beginning of creation. For this they willingly. Why didn't everybody in Noah's day escape the flood and get on the ark? I'll tell you why. Because they were willingly ignorant in unbelief. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, when God spoke the word, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water were by the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. We're word, one word. Listen, we're one word away from the fire of God consuming the heavens and the earth. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved under fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us. We're not, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come, the next judgment. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth and also the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought you to be? And all holy conversation to God on us, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blemish. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. You know why you aren't dead this morning? You know why you're not in eternity this morning? I'll tell you why. Because God is long suffering. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There's coming a day of impending judgment. You can escape it, dear friend. It won't be by water the next time. It'll be a judgment of fire. And you can escape it. You say, well, Noah preached 120 years. Only his wife, his three sons, and his three daughter-in-laws believed. But you remember what the Bible said? He believed God built the ark to the saving of his household. What do you got to say about that, preacher? I got to say this. They followed Noah into the ark. The ark was the type of our salvation, the type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where's your family following you? Huh? That's what I want to know. Where is your family following you this morning? You want to be here for the fires of God's impending judgment? Or do you want to go up with the saints of God into glory before judgment and tribulation comes on the end of the earth? The wise choice is to go with Jesus. Amen? Let's go with Jesus. Let's pray. 
Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of preaching the unsearchable riches of the grace of God. We know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is simply believing God, taking God at His word. And Lord, today I pray if there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, may they realize, Lord, that we have signs of times all in front of us, Lord, that we need to wake up. It's not a wooden ark pitched with tire. It's a resurrected Lord Jesus Christ proclaimed through His Word and the preaching of His Word. So Lord, I pray today that no person will leave from this building today unsaved, unprepared to meet God. I pray that this invitation will drive home the importance of the hour. Lord, we got no guarantee of tomorrow. Boast not thyself tomorrow. Thou knowest not what a day we may bring forth. But we have the guarantee of today. Today is the day of salvation. Heart not your hearts. God has a gift. May we claim it today in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand together and sing a good song of invitation. God moves on your heart. Just as I am. Just as I am. Just as you are today. You walk out to give your heart to Jesus, receive Him as Savior, and receive Him as Lord. Will you do it today? Will you do it today? Maybe there's a burden on your heart, a prayer request, a need in your life. This altar is always open, dear friend. You don't have to wait on the Lord. The Lord is waiting on you today. Will you respond by faith? By faith. By faith. Will you? And waiting not to rid my soul of one dark cloud. without Jesus you remember for all time and eternity every invitation that you ever had there's memory in hell friends the rich man who died was buried in hell lifted his eyes in torment so Lazarus was far off but he remembered his brothers and he didn't want them to come remember if you're here today and you have not responded, it's not too late. You're still breathing. God's still in the saving business. In a moment, we'll dismiss, but we're going to ask you to stay. Okay? If you're not saved, I wouldn't leave this building. I wouldn't take a chance driving down that highway. Right? I really wouldn't. It's a dangerous world we live in. A dangerous world we live in. Folks are leaving it all the time. You could be next. You need to be prepared. God bless you. I love you. Shake hands with your neighbors. And when you get through shaking hands, you will be dismissed.